everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do credits and titles. So kind of delving into the, the graphic part of Premiere Pro, but I'm not really getting deep into the graphics as much as just, like I said, like an open opening title, closing credits sort of thing. And they've kind of changed this a little bit where it's located. If you're working in 2024, you used to go under captions and graphics and you would find an edit tab here under 2024. They've gotten rid of that completely. This makes a little bit more sense to me, but now they've they've added this properties panel. If you go under any, almost any one of these arrangements under here, assembly or editing, if you go under editing, you now have this property panel added, which has some quick features. And this is where you edit, especially your text graphics here. So if you're doing credits or, or, or open titles, this is the panel that you're going to be editing that in now. So if we go under workspaces, I'm going to go under assembly because it gives me a little bit more space over here. And we have the property tab over here. And we're going to go ahead and add an opening credit to our short film here. So I'm going to go down here on the toolbar and you'll see this letter T here. And that is your type tool. And you can also see that the shortcut for that is the letter T. If I just hit T, you can either click on this with your mouse or you can just hit the letter T. I'm going to hit T and it chooses your text tool there. Now, right now I'm over no video at all. If, if you happen to be over a video signal here and you go up and click on your and click on the screen here on your program monitor, it will add a prompt to type in your text. It also adds this graphic uh, file on top of your video here because it doesn't overwrite your video. It superimposes it over your video. Now, with my text prompt here selected, I can just start typing my awesome movie. I'm going to do something that takes a couple lines because I want to show you how to for do some formatting here. Uh, but, but the text superimposes right over the top of the video. If you do not do that over video, if I move over here to the very beginning and I type in my text tool right here, and it creates this five second graphic here, but notice if it's going to butt into, into video here, it's going to put it on the layer up above, so it will superimpose that graphic on top. Now I can type in my awesome movie. I'm gonna hit return, because once again, we're gonna show you how to format this. And if you do it where there is like nothing or video that's in, in the way here, let's show you that as well. I'm gonna hit my letter A for all tracks forward. I'm gonna drag these forward so there's a big space here, more than a five second space here. And now I'm going to hit T for my text tool, bring it up and click on it. Notice it puts it on the first layer here. Uh, unless it's going to, if it's going to butt into video, it'll do it on the layer above because it's going to superimpose into the video. But if you do that where it has enough timing here that's not going to butt into any videos, it'll just simply put it on, on your video one track. So I'm going to undo that, undo a couple times here. And what I want to do here is I want my, I'm going to delete that other one. I want my uh, text to fade in. So first of all, if I want that to fade in, I'm going to hit command D, it'll do a fade in. And it didn't do a fade in because this track is not activated yet. So I'm going to, it's called track targeting. So I'm going to turn on track targeting for that. Now my shortcuts will apply to that video track. So now if I hit command D, it'll apply it to this text here. Uh, and also if I want this to fade in and fade out another little trick here, you can select the entire clip and hit command D. And it'll add a cross dissolve to both, both the sides here to the beginning and the ending of your, of your graphic here. Now I can press play, it fades in. I'm going to mute my audio here just so I can pay attention here. So now it will fade in. Got a guy crying here. It cuts in. Let's let's go to this track right here. I'm going to add a, a fade in on the video. And I'm going to extend this so the title moves over into the video here and then fades out before it does the next cut. So we have my movie title. And this is kind of a crappy movie title. We're going to spruce it up a little bit. And then it will fade out here before it cuts to the next clip here. So... Now there's a couple ways of editing this. First of all, I'm still on the text tool here. If you go back to your arrow tool, notice when I hover my mouse over this outline is red. If I go down here and click on my arrow and I select this, that is now this blue outline, which means this is this is just a wireframe to be able to edit a few different features of your of your of your graphic here. And one of the ways to edit this is by moving your mouse up over this wireframe here. You have access first of all to scale. If you go to these corner nodes here or the side nodes, this will scale your text to make it larger or smaller. You also have the option of grabbing it here in the middle and you can move it around on the screen, decide where you want to place that on the, on the screen. So you have position, you have scale, you also have rotation. With rotation, you go up to the corners and just if you move it out a little further where you've got this kind of curved arrow as opposed to this little double arrow going in both directions, your scale arrow, you can click here and drag and it will rotate it if you want to kind of put it skewed a little bit like on an angle, you can rotate it. And then the other thing that you have is your anchor point. You can move your mouse over this anchor point and position your anchor wherever you want to and it will spin around. It will also scale based on this anchor point here. If I have my anchor point where it was positioned originally here, it scales out from that point there. If you move it to the middle, it will scale out from the middle. See that? And it grows from the middle there. 
Uh, same as rotation, if you have this in a, it right here in the center and you rotate, it will, it's almost like a pin is poking it right in the middle there on the wall and you got this photo that you, you are rotating, it will rotate around that point there. And now if you drag this down and put it in the very corner down here, lined up right there, now it will rotate around that point and it will scale from that point as well. So now it's like a little pin is poking it down there. So you have the capability with this wireframe of positioning, rotating, scaling, and changing your anchor point. So I'm going to undo that, get it back to where it was in the first place. And now we're going to move over to the side here to our properties panel. And this is where you have options such as Change, or yeah, changing your font, changing how large it is, some other features as well, like the fill color, the stroke, background, drop shadow, a whole bunch of different things here. And they even added this cool little mask with text item here, which we'll show. So let's work on the font here. I'm going to go over to the text. I'm going to pull this down, and we're going to choose a font for my text here. And you can install your own fonts. There's a lot of free fonts out there you can grab. Right now, I'm going to look for something kind of bold because I want to show that little mask with text feature here. So I'm going to do impact and see what we got there. There's the font, and over here you have your size, which you can control with your scale on your wireframe as well. But this is kind of an important feature here. If you want your text aligned in the center here, this, this will center it within the box. It does not center it on screen. We'll show you that option here in a moment. So I move my mouse over this and click on the center align. It will align it within the text box here. So now that my text is centered within the uh, within this wireframe here, I want to center it on screen. So I'm gonna go, uh, you can grab this and eyeball it if you want to, but it's just going to approximate it and you might not get it exactly. I mean, that looks fine, but let's say that I want to get, uh, get this perfectly vertically aligned and horizontally aligned. Then you're gonna move over to your properties panel. You're gonna scroll down. There's a little bit hiding down here at the bottom where you've got your align and transform. It's been put in a slightly different location. But right here, you've got align. This is your align center horizontally and vertically and positioning in different spots on your screen here. But if I wanna put it dead center, I'm going to click on align center horizontally and it aligns it horizontally and now it'll do it vertically as well right here and now it's perfectly centered. So next let's work on the color here. I'm going to go up to under appearance you have uh, your fill colors here which you just click on your white and it will bring up this little color picker and you can choose what color that you want. So if we want this to kind of stand out maybe as a red text I don't know we'll do it as a red text here I do it as a kind of a dark red and you can choose any color you want to. You have your hue, saturation, and luminance sliders over here. This is your hue slider over here. This is for luminance, and then this is for saturation going back and forth. So we got a red text there. I'm going to hit OK. And now I've got the color. I've got the font that I want. And let's go over and look at some of these options here. You have stroke, background, shadow here. Now the stroke will put an outline on the outside of it, and you can control your, your, your stroke color by clicking on the center there and choosing your color. And then you can choose how many, what the width of the, the, the pixel width of the outer stroke is. And I can type in two to make it a little thinner there. We've got a little thinner. You can go down to one and make a really thin, just subtle outline there. You can also do, and this you need to look, you need, we need to have this superimposed over a video to see what it's doing. So we'll move our playhead over the video here. And I'm going to choose background first of all. Background just adds kind of this, this block on the outside of it just to make it kind of stand out. You can make it, you can change you can change the opacity here of it and make it like just make it completely opaque. You can change the dis how wide this little box goes here. You can change the edges so it's like a beveled edge there. And then, of course, you can change the color. And there you go. All right, let's turn that off and then we'll show you your drop shadow here. They just call it shadow. But the shadow is also another way of making your text stand out if you check mark that. You can see right now it's got this very subtle shadow going on there. So you can change the color if you want it like a, a really dark shadow put it all the way black. And then you have an opacity slider here to make it more or less opaque. There's all the way opaque there. And here you've got your distance. So it's got this shadow that kind of uh, go, uh, gravitates away from your text there. And this is going to make it larger here. This is going to make it larger here. And then you have a feather at the very bottom, making it very hard edge or making a soft edge and making that shadow stand out. Now, the last feature under the appearance here is mask with text. This is kind of a cool feature they've added. If we put this, let's put this over, I'm gonna just duplicate this just to demonstrate this. I'm gonna grab this and I'm holding down option right now and dragging this off and it will duplicate this file and I can move my mouse over this. We can select it. And by the way, when you wanna edit these things, you not only have to select the graphic tool, you have to go up and select the layer. I'm gonna show you how to add different layers here. This is like Photoshop lower. If you want like text all over the screen, you can go up here and make different layers and we'll, and we'll show that in a minute. But right now, if, uh, if we're gonna use this feature, this mask feature here at the bottom, this mask feature down here, mask with text. Uh, what you do have to have a, a, an object for it to, to interact with. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to add another layer to this here. 
Uh, we're going to add a, a graphic layer. So right here, I'm, I'm going to have my graphic layer selected here. And now I'm going to go, now I'm going to go down to my shape tool and grab my shape tool with the graphic layer selected and my shape tool and my rectangle tool selected. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click and drag a shape across this and make it a little bit bigger here. So it fills up the screen and I can hit my arrow tool and grab this and move it up, make it like a little bit bigger. So make sure it fills the entire screen there. I'm going to change the color of this. Let's change it to black. Uh, and we also have to put this below the text. So the text is going to go on the top of it here. And now I'm going to select my text. Make sure that you select the text layer, not the shape layer. Now we're going to go down and click on mask with text. And right now, a couple things. First of all, it's got all this kind of blue drop shadow there. I can just turn off my drop shadow to make it sharp. And it's using the black right now to put it in the text, which you can just basically make the color black. So what you have to do is go down and click invert. And now you have this text that is see-through to the screen before below it. So I put the black layer on there. So now you can grab this scale, you can change the scale and you can see what's happening there. So kind of a cool little see through thing there that, that we're creating without having to do any mess with any blend modes and the opacity, which is the original way that you had to do that. So that's just an alternate feature that we have right there. One other thing that you have the option of doing is adding multiple pieces of text on the same graphic file here. So and these are layers like you have in Photoshop. We go up here and we grab our title and move it down here. If you want to add more stuff on the same screen here, we can go to on the same graphic file. We can go up to our text layer here. You can right click on it and just say duplicate and it's duplicated that file. Now, now you can move it aside and you can change the size of this one and then you can retype, just double click in here and you can retype starring Joe Blow. There we go. And we have that all in the same text layer. This is like Photoshop where if you drag one below the other and you have one file that's on top of each other, it'll slightly overlap it. So now my awesome movie is slightly over the top of this one. That's because it's on top here. If we change those by dragging one up above it. It'll put the Joe Blow on the top right there. So, all right, guys, that is the basics of how to create titles. And the next episode is actually when I'm going to get into the credits. We'll get into showing how to do credits and how to do scrolling credits as well. So thank you very much for watching ChinVat. And if you have any questions or comments, please post them below.